Hey everybody, welcome to VV Quest. I am VV Dosh. It's good to be back. I'm not in the woods this time. I'm not in a super hot trail. Up by Santa Clarita, I am back in the apartment. Back in the apartment, aren't we all? Just just in our places of residence, aren't we? It's where we're at. It's where we've been. It's where we're gonna be. Because you know what, California, they're opening up on Friday is when the stay at home order is supposed to lift. I don't, you know, a lot can happen between then and now. So who even knows what they're gonna do? But uh, hopefully it'll open on Friday. Or it'll, you know, the life will open up on Friday. But I gotta say, where am I gonna go? Still can't hardly go anywhere, you know? It's like, oh, I can go, you know. What, I can go to Ikea now? I don't give a shit. Like, probably not even. That place is huge. It's like the entire, it's like a sixth of the size of the town of Burbank. Ikea. They named it Ikea Way. And their founder was kind of a Nazi. For a while, anyway. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of true. The guy who started Ikea, he was a fascist for a while. I mean, I don't know if he was for a while, but like he was like, when they invented fascism, he was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. And then I think he was sort of like, eh, nah, you know, which, whatever. I'm not one to judge. It's really easy for me to say fascism is bad when they didn't invent it yesterday. <laughs> you know, if it were like, Two weeks old, be like, oh yeah, okay, you know. One guy says everything. It's easier. I could see that. <laughs> oh fuck. I want I want I'm bored, you guys. I'm real bored. That's just all there is to it. I really want regular life to start back up. And it's just not, you know, cause Tell you, I mean, like we were saying, you know, here in California, you know, our, our, our governor at one point said that he, they're not going to allow large gatherings until there's a vaccine. And that, you know, that might be bullshit. That might just be one thing he just fired off willy-nilly one day. But I mean, it's, you know, the comedy store isn't opening up on Friday. You know that for a fact. And, ah. Uh, I don't want to go do comedy, you guys. I really want to go do stand-up. Really want to. I miss, I miss all my friends that I see at the store. I miss them terribly. I miss goofing around on them. And I miss, I miss getting on stage and just freaking out the squares. You know? Talking about malarkey. You know, just wilding out. I miss it. I miss what I'm, I feel like when I'm doing stand up, it's like I'm. It's like I'm hyper me. You know? It's like I'm myself times like one and a half. You know? And like I'm never really that person in regular life, but on stage I get to be just this crazy heightened version of myself. And that's really what's so much fun. You know? I get to say things I don't really mean. But like, I mean them in like, an alternate dimension, and I get to bring that alternate dimension into our world and share them with you. I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about on stage, I really do. You know, that was so much fun, you get like a joke idea, and it's like, oh I can't wait to talk about that tonight, you know? <laughs> One thing I was thinking. An idea I wanted to run on stage, because, you know, I've been watching a lot of movies in the quarantine. I was thinking about the movie Home Alone, and uh, if Kevin McAllister had gone through puberty when that movie happened, it'd be a much darker film. You know, because then just think, like, he'd have, I mean, because that kid's a sadist, first of all, and if he's going to be that clever, you know, with, with, you know, eight-year-old's perspective. That's quite something. But if he were, like, 13, 14, that whole movie would be, like, 
you know, Joe Pesci sneaks into the garage and he gets his boots stuck in like rubber cement and then there's like a riding mower with a dildo on it just comes around and just starts fucking up in the ass. I want to go outside. I want to do comedy. God, I'm bored in here. Oh, well. At least I have an outlet. You know, at least I have you guys. Which, by the way, I really appreciate you all watching and listening or however you're taking this all. It means a lot to me. And if you guys would want to, like, retweet it and share it around, I would really appreciate that because I don't know what's going on with the, the algorithms on Facebook lately, but, like, none of my shit's going through anymore. It's like... I swear to God, if it's not about, like, me being trans, it's just, or, it just doesn't go through, you know? Yeah. If it's like, if it's like a yay me thing to either, like, elicit joy in others or fury in others, I feel like it's just not getting through, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know. Learning how to do all that stuff, learning how to market myself, learning how to be more visible. It's not that tough, you know. Life's not that tough, I realize. You know, it's just kinda when I looked at when I look at goals kinda as like you know, all I'm ever really doing is like what's on the agenda today? And getting bigger goals doesn't change I mean, it does change today, but it doesn't, like, make today more arduous. Not really, you know? Because all, like, I'm ever doing is, like, doing the next thing to do, you know? Like, no, I never need to, like, life never gets any more complicated than just doing the next thing, you know? So, yeah, jeez, I mean... Been getting out a lot. Oh, oh! I actually saw. I I went for um, went for a social distance hike, with a, or a walk rather, with a friend a day around West Hollywood. You know, and I I you know I've been FaceTiming with people, and talking with people on the phone, and that's been well and good. But I haven't really hung out with a friend since all this has been happening. And you know, just called up a friend like, do you want to do a six feet apart walk around West Hollywood? He said yes, and you know, this is a dear, dear friend of mine, and I finally got to see him, just after two months of no real contact with anyone, I finally got to see someone I dearly love in person, and uh, I gotta say, overrated. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, there you are, yeah, it's like, it's like FaceTime with meat, I get it. <laughs> Although, you know what, I actually, there was a coffee shop that was somehow open, that we walked past, and, um, you know, because I guess they were open for Postmates or whatever, but if you're just like a regular person, you know, you would get, you, you would get the, your coffee the same way a Postmate person would, so I went in and ordered a cold brew, and I gotta say, just having like a dumb, bullshit consumerist experience was like, oh, thank you, you know, just like, like, I don't need this cold brew. I got coffee at home. But just going in and being like, I'm spending a frivolous six bucks. Ooh, that hit the spot. <laughs> yeah, I really did. Then I went to Trader Joe's. I don't know what the fuck is going on at Trader Joe's. You guys, there's a... There's a darkness there, you know? I feel like it's where psychopaths go. You know? I feel like it's too, it's too thirsty. I mean, I like their food, but the goodwill there, it's just too thirsty. And I feel like everyone who goes there, it's like they go there because they're like, yay, you know, if I were a people, if I were a guy who drills holes in people's skulls and has sex with the holes, I wouldn't be going in this wacky Hawaiian shirt place, would I? <laughs> huh. oh. Especially the one in West Hollywood, it was extra, it was extra tense. But they didn't have a line. That's where I get my coffee at Trader Joe's. And they finally didn't have a line. So I had to go in when I had the opportunity. Because the Trader Joe's in Silver Lake, you know, for a long time, it's just been lying across the street like the goddamn Soviet Union. Everyone out there just, you know, waiting in line for coconut water. 
Yeah. So I hope you're doing well. Everybody, you know, I don't know where all my listeners are from, but I hope you're not going too crazy. You know what, though? It's not even... It's not even... Has the quarantine changed your life, Fifi? Is it scary how much it changed your life? You know what? It's scary how much it hasn't. You know, it's way more like my regular life than I'm comfortable admitting. I'll tell you that. Really made me realize, like, you know what? There's so much stuff I just could do. And there's just nothing holding me back but, like, routine and inertia. And just fudge that. You know, I got a lot of plants that I want to, you know, really want to be diligent about making happen when I this whole thing gets lifted. I want to go... On a vacation back to Montana, because Montana's one of the greatest places in the world. Gonna go see my buddy Andy Russo up there in his, his little goat ranch. Pet a goat. You know. And yeah, I'm gonna travel around. There's also like in, you know, not northern California, but like mid-California, there's all these beautiful like day hikes you can go on up in the mountains that are like pretty intense. And you know, I could like... Leave on a Friday afternoon, drive up there, get in a hotel, get, you know, up the ass crack, and, you know, go do a day hike, spend the night, and then drive back home. I could be doing that, you know, twice a month. And I just haven't, because of inertia. Fuck that. That's what I say. In a lot of ways, the teen has showed me how to live life. And, um... Because it's just kind of forced structure on me. Because he used to be, you know, he used to be like, hey, I'm running around, I'm doing everything. Clearly, I'm living it because I'm running around so much. And it's like, now that I'm not running around so much, it's like, you know, now that I'm stuck in a place, it kind of made me realize how much I was stuck in a place energetically, even though I was running around, if that makes sense. So that's something I'm really going to work on structuring my time you know, being with people and making a point to get out. There's no reason I can't drive up to Bishop, California twice a week and go do a day hike. And it's important to treat myself well. That's a big thing in the transition, too, you know, because it's just, you know, it's demanding, but I'm glad it's demanding because... You know, I was talking with a girl the other day, and, you know, I was just mentioning how, like, you know, doing makeup and doing everything, it kind of adds time to your day, and it's, she was saying, like, oh, yeah, welcome to womanhood, it's so much harder to be a girl, but it's like, like, yeah, does it take me an extra half hour to do makeup in the morning? Yes, but, like, I have something worth taking care of now, you know? Like, guys don't have... If they have all the time in the world, they don't have anything to spend a half hour on to make themselves look cute. Which I promise you is way worse. So. God. Yeah, sorry. Just being self-conscious, looking at myself in the mirror. I want to get all my facial hair going. I want to get... I want to get on hormones for a little while and kind of really, really let it get a run at my body before I do certain things, mainly hair removal, because I want to get this thing called an epilator, where it's like basically a little thing that you, you know, run across your face, like, like epilation just means ripping hair off, so waxing is technically epilation, but like an epilator, it's like a little electric shaver that just like rips little tiny hairs out of you wherever. Um, I don't want to get a, invest in Amazon, get a good one of those, but I've heard they they hurt. Um, not unbearably, but I've heard it said it's like getting a tattoo, which would mean I need to get like a tattoo, so to speak, everywhere. And I definitely want my testosterone blockers to be at a good level because I do when I do that because I don't want to be doing that multiple times, you know. Because yeah, you know, like. And I'm not beating myself about this, but I'm just seeing, like, yeah, I can see a little facial hair right now, and it's, like, if I shave in the morning and I do makeup, it's, there's only so much more makeup you can buy at the end of the day, because hair will come in, and there'll be, like, 
a texture that's kind of unavoidable, but you know what? Whatever. I don't, I don't give a fuck, you guys. You know? That's what I'm going to ask all my, all my, all the, look, all the trans people who listen to this, and everyone else for that matter, I invite you to go end of eight mile on life today. Just be like, yeah, I shave my body twice a day, or twice a week. I shave my body twice a week while I listen to King of the Hill. I'm going to have a penis till 2022. I'm beautiful, fuck free world. <laughs> So, what else have I been doing? Oh, I've been playing a lot of mandolin, because um, I'm going for some advanced white girlery, which I think learning bluegrass music is, you know, in that realm, you know. Basic white girlness, that's all well and good, but I think, you know, I've been learning bluegrass music and, you know, ordering, like, you know, weird Norse folk dresses on, you know, on Sheen.com. I'm, I'm like transitioning into like an, like an alt-right dude's idea of a wife. <laughs> but yeah, I've been playing mandolin a lot, and it's been a lot of fun, because I really love like bluegrass music and old-time music, and I'm having a hoot, and I'm getting pretty good at it, if I don't mind so myself. Um, I used to... I played guitar in high school because it was just like the thing to do. I gotta, by the way, I gotta say, I kinda, I kinda hate acoustic guitar. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just, when someone's on the subway, some dude's on the subway and like an acoustic guitar busts one out, I'm just like, oh god, I would, are you sure this can't be a shooting? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just, I find acoustic guitar basic. That's how I feel. Sorry about it. So I'm not a fan, but I love mandolin and I get stringed instruments and this feels just like a different sound and I dig it. And it's also, mandolin's really cool because I find it, if I want to like, it's really great at going between like chords and melody. So it's like, if you want, say you have like the lick of a song, right? It'd be like do 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 do. What you do with mandolin is you'll take like the first note of the lick and you'll play a chord that has that note in it, and then the last note of the lick you'll play another chord with that note in it. So it's like it's rather than doing like chords, chords, chords for a verse, and then you get to play a lick and then stop too abruptly and play the chords again. It's really fun to merge the two, so you can like. It's like you can play the melody of a song without singing if you don't if you don't want to sing along with it you can kind of do the vocal line and the chords of a song all in one which I think is cool. I uh, learned the song Time to Pretend by MGMT doing that and I think it sounds great. It I played a video of it on my, all my social media if you want to check out any mandolin videos. So Yeah, I'm realizing I love country music, like bluegrass music, not country music so much. I mean, I mean I do, but you know, most most country is really just kind of like white trash pop, I guess you'd call it. By the way, um, I was just, I I think about the song "Space Cowboy" by Casey Musgraves a lot, which if you don't know it, it's she goes like. Um, let me come and try to sing with my new voice. I go on out your space, cowboy. I ain't gonna fence you in. And just the thought that there was some dude in the world who was dating Casey Flippin' Musgraves and he gave her the whole like, I don't wanna get locked down. You don't wanna get locked down to what? Huh? You don't want to get locked down to what, stupid? If you were any kind of sensible man, if you had the, if you had the sense, the Lord gave a clam, you would have pumped nine babies into her on date six. What's the matter with you, you big, stupid? I'm boiling here. Casey Musgraves is gorgeous, you idiot. She looks like she's made out of. Butterfly do. Oh gosh, well, I 
tell you what, I wanted to just share a couple things about how I am doing, I guess, spiritually right now. I am very, I talked about this on previous episodes about like being nervous going outside because it's like, you know, I have some residual fear, like is it safe for me as a trans woman to be who I am outside? You know, I had a lot of fear of life that I've been working on overcoming and, you know, before this I was really killing it and doing like, you know, just feeling like I can go anywhere, life is amazing, and then quarantine happened. And now when I go out, it's like, oh, I gotta stay away from that person, I gotta stay away from that person, and it's just generally more tense outside, so it's very easy for me to get into that old fear again, but I, I've talked about all that. Um, that's something I'm really trying to do. Like, when I go outside, I feel like I'm rushing through life, you know? And part of, like, being a woman now is I'm very much trying to... I'm trying to move in my body, if that makes sense. Like, I, my soul, me, I want to move, I want to feel myself moving in my body, as opposed to, I kind of felt like before I was, when I would move through life, when I would walk around, I was really tense and like, brusque and abrupt. And I was, the analogy I like is I felt like I was like dragging myself through life or like shoving myself hurriedly through life. And now it's like, I want to be in myself and I want to take my time going through life. I want to feel in my body. I want to feel myself in my voice. And I want to feel life, because life feels great. You know, being a human being, being out in the world, all those things innately feel good. And when people would say things like that before, I would just, honestly, I thought they were full of shit. I thought they were like, I'd be like, there goes this person and their positive lies, you know? And that's what's really, I think like the scary thing about not being oriented yourself or like something fundamental about yourself, like not being right or on the road to being right, is then when people, because like, you know, like when I'm living as the wrong gender, or I suppose if there's anything of a scale comparatively wrong about however anyone else might be living, Life does not feel good. So when people just say like, hey, like, regular life is great. Like, just going out and enjoying a day. It feels awesome. And I would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it doesn't feel bad. Or maybe it feels nothing at all. Maybe it's tolerable. But like, yeah, okay, it's good. Whatever you say. And then, like, play that long enough. You know, you build on that belief long enough, then it just starts to think like, well, people who... People who think life is good are lying, and they're full of shit, and they don't know how things really are, because for all I know, this is how life is. It was how my life was. So then, like, building on that after a lifetime, you learn to slowly, like, distrust good feelings and the inherent goodness of life. Which is terrible and really tragic. And I was that guy for a long time. And I don't have to be that girl. You know? And I mean, I, I just couldn't see. I couldn't see that life was good. I couldn't feel that life was good. I wasn't enabled to. I mean, what else, what else would I make of it other than that positive happy person is lying or full of shit or they're or they haven't seen the truth like I have you know and that's a really kind of insidious thing I think in culture is this idea like that like being miserable is being real or honest you know 
And I want to like, I want to extend that line of thinking not just to like individuals, but like to the world at large as well. Like, have you ever heard someone say, you know, you heard about a person who's kind of a jerk who just says mean things about people and they're like, oh, I'm just being honest or I'm just being real. And you might think back like, well, if you're just being real, how come you're never real about anything good about anything or anybody? Right? I think we're, a lot of culture is like that about humanity at large. You know, I really don't dig on the whole idea that like the world is ending or everything is irreparably fucked or we're doomed. I don't buy a word of that. I think life is going to get better and better. I think where we're going is amazing. I think the challenges is humanity face, we can figure out. I think human beings are incredible. And I don't like the idea like, well, this is happening and this is happening, this is happening and, you know, I'm just being real about what's really happening and I'm just being smart and I'm just being honest and then it's, you know, similar to the individual level. It's like, well, if you're just being real and honest, you know, why wouldn't we be real and honest about the great things? about people, about people and about society and about life. And I know it's hard, you know, sometimes I really, I got to turn out a lot of media to get in that place because that's not media's agenda. It's not media's It's not media's M.O. to go, you know, for the most part, things work really well and life is full of love. I kind of think there'd be a market for that. Maybe there will be one day. But anyway, that's how I, Oh, and I guess one, one other thing I wanted to share, because I talked a lot at the beginning of the episode about doing comedy again. I, a little anecdote that I think is really relevant to my transition particularly that I think is very important that I I like to think that like what's important to me about my transition can be applied in a meta and could be helpful to other people so in that spirit I want to share this there was a time last year you know I've mentioned before that there was a time before I came out as a woman that excuse me real quick There was a time last year where I was like wearing dresses occasionally and wearing makeup or wearing like women's tops and jeans um, where I was still living as a man and going by man pronouns and everything. And I was just like, well, fuck it, I'll just wear whatever I want. You know, I'm like gender non-conforming. Like I'm like a James Charles or something. And... Part of what got me there was, at the time, I was listening to a lot of Eminem, for whatever reason. Now, I really like him. I'm a big fan of him. And I know a lot of queer people are really not. <laughs> and I get it. Like, like, there's a line in the Marshall Mathers LP where he's like, I swear to God, like, he shits on like gay people, lesbians, trans people, and he, and he, I swear to God, he gets like intersex pe people in there. It's like, well, M, you, you just shit on all the letters. <laughs> in 2002, you shit on the letters before they were letters, man. That is some, that is some next level homophobia, my friend. <laughs> but, I've always really loved him because of one, I feel bad for him is, Life growing up was terrible, but I was also love, like, I really embraced the I don't give a fuckness of the whole thing, because he was just saying, well, I think he's so funny, first of all, and he was just saying the illest, most I don't give a fuck shit in the world, and like, after Slim Shady LP came out, Marshall Mathers LP is even rawer and darker, and less give a fuck, and angrier even, 
And that was at that point where I was getting really fed up with stand-up and really fed up with life just because, you know, like I said, I'm in the wrong, was in the wrong body, living as the wrong gender, among other things. So when I was performing, I was really like at a point where I'm like, well, fuck everyone, I'm doing exactly what I want. And part of that was dressing up gender non-conforming on stage. I'm like, I'm going to wear a dress on stage and yell at people and talk all kinds of shit because I'm so fed up with every goddamn thing and this is going to be me. Now, that was a really fun time for me because it was starting, it's like the proto me coming out. That was when I started like wearing dresses outside and on stage. And it was great. But it had like a, it had a super aggro-ness to it. It was a lot of me going, yeah, this is how I dress, so fuck you. And... Eventually I realized, like, well, I don't want to go, f like, I love this, the dressing this way, but I don't want to go fuck you to everyone. I don't want to be that person all the time. That's not a good long-term way to live. And I'm not, you know, I want to be, I don't want to be that defensive. I want to be vulnerable. I want to do this and not care what people think, but still be vulnerable on stage. And then that, so I started trying to do that. And I did on stage, and then I kind of realized, you know, I could probably do this. This doesn't have to be a stunt. If I can do it hanging out in the comedy club and walking to the comedy club, I can do it in regular life. So I started doing that. And then eventually it was like, I'm going to wear a dress occasionally every day. I'm going to wear a dress occasionally all day. And then it started like, well, I love doing this. And then I started shopping for new clothes. And I'm like, why would I ever want to wear guys clothes again guys clothes are boring and yuck and all that while I was like you know what I bet this is the kind of thing that trans women do when they're gearing up to come out and sure enough that's what that's what happened <laughs> so in a weird way I was inspired you know and like again I've got plenty of people in my life who are trans supportive you know, I don't live in some horrible place. I live in L.A. But what really a massive leap forward in my journey to coming out and living happily as a trans woman was me listening to maybe the most homophobic artist who ever lived. <laughs> and that's what I needed to hear. And who would have known that? Who would have, like... You know, there are people out there who are gender therapists whose whole job is helping people come to terms with this kind of thing. I don't think there's, you know, I'm not going to tell them their business, but I don't think there's any of them out there in the world who'd be like, oh, yeah, Vivi, you're struggling with your gender identity. I'm going to tell you what you need. You need to listen. <laughs> you need to listen to the, I hate, <laughs> what is it, the all fucking... Oh, stab you in the head where a fa whether you're a fag or a les guy. You need to listen to him. That's what'll do it, you know? But that's what I needed. And that really, that in a nutshell, is why I think censorship of any kind is terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. That has become less of a popular opinion in general. It's become dispiritingly unpopular in my art form but that's why I think censorship is disgusting of any kind because you don't know what people need to hear it's terribly presumptuous maybe people need to hear filth I did my life is so much better it's worth, it's not only worth living, I am thriving. And fucking Eminem was a big part of that. So, I think the First Amendment is incredibly important. And I always will. It, it saved my life. The exact kind of obscenity that people who don't maybe believe in that would try to protect me from is what saved me from dying and what allowed me was a massive tool in my journey to living 
a glorious life I'm so happy to be in now. So, anyway, I guess that's preachy enough, but I feel really strongly about that. And it's important... I felt that was important for me to share. So, so I did. Anyway, you guys, I think that's about time. Um, I love you all, little housekeeping stuff. If you want to write to me, you know, you can ask a question or just give a shout out. Um, I set up an email for this podcast. It's fifiquestpodcast at gmail.com. Or, you know, leave a comment in the comments on YouTube. Excuse me, I'll, you know, I'll talk to you. I'd love to talk to you for whatever you want to talk about. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe on Apple. And if you enjoy this content, please share it around online. I would really, really appreciate it because I love what I'm doing. And I really love being visible and open with you guys. And, you know, life has taught me to ask and to ask for help from people. Because people out there want to help me and want to show me love. And I want to show you guys love and help you out too. So, no more hiding around for me. Time to be part of life in a big way. That's what I say. So, have a lovely night, everyone. Love you guys. Bye.